Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. I hope you're ready for a great week, and I hope you had a great weekend worshiping with us in person or online. Hey, if you need help, who do you call? And please don't say Ghostbusters, okay? I know, if you're a child of, uh, like I am, of the age I am, then, then that may resonate. But seriously, where do you look for help? Uh, is it in counselors? Is it in friends or family? Is it in a financial advisor? Or maybe it's just yourself. You seek your own counsel. The psalmist says, don't look anywhere but God. Listen to Psalm 121, verses 1 through 4. He says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, but he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Now, that's just a, a few of the verses, about half the psalm. It goes on to affirm that God is our source of help. So let me just you know, walk back through that and see what uh, really the psalmist is pointing us to, to teach us. He's saying Jesus is our help. He's the one who's going to rescue us. He's the one who saved us from sin by paying for our rebellion on the cross so that we could be saved. And then God put the Holy Spirit in our lives to be our comforter, to be our encourager, to be our strength and our teacher. He's the helper. He provides wisdom. He teaches truth. He guides our steps. And then, of course, the Holy Spirit empowers us and guarantees salvation in us. So we can have confidence, no matter what we're facing, that God is our help. We can have confidence if we trust in God. So when I ask the question, who are you trusting in for help? You've got to decide where you're looking because I choose to look to Jesus. Now, what does that look like? When you're saying, hey, look to God for help, it's easy words. What does it actually look like? Well, it means that when you're facing troubles, you pray. You actually seek a conversation with God so that you can ask God for help. And a lot of times that means God save me, God rescue me, God provide for me. But a lot of times it's just simply, God, what do I need to do? So you start off with praying and then you trust. In the, in the midst of your prayers, just acknowledge that God is with you. He's for you. He's working out to redeem your life right now, even if you can't see it. In fact, truth is you probably can't see it, but you can know it's true if you trust God. And then act. Pray, trust, but none of that means anything if you don't act. When I say act, I don't mean just make rash decisions and go do something. I mean obey God's word. Don't just be uh, hearers of the word, but be a doer of the word. Because if we do the word, uh, or if we hear the word but don't do the word, we're just deceiving ourselves. So act on the word of God. Obey Jesus where you know to obey Jesus. If that means you need to forgive someone, forgive someone. If that means you need to help someone, help someone. If that means you need to uh, uh, you know, serve someone, serve someone. Whatever God is telling you to do, you do it. And then, finally, after you pray, you trust, you act, then expect God to help. Expect him to answer. Expect him to deliver just know it's not going to be in the way that you want it to be, most likely. can't say that it never is in the way you want it to be, but most likely it's not going to be in the way you want, but it will be in the way that allows God to redeem for his glory and for our benefit. So uh, I hope that helps you. Uh, I mean, right now, today, I hope you don't need help, but if you do, I hope you will look to God as your source of rescue. God bless Calvary.